everyone, I'm Rick and thanks for dropping by my channel today. So uh, basically my purpose is to help you realize the truth that your natural state is feeling great. And today what I want to talk about is what I believe to be a fantastic morning routine which costs you nothing, doesn't take a lot of time and basically just sets you up for the best damn day you can possibly have. So let's not waste any time, basically the first thing you want to do is just don't hit the snooze button. Get out of bed straight away. It works for the Marines in the Army. It works for uh, Rocky in uh, Rockies 1 through... Maybe not Rocky 5. Rockies 1 through 4 and 6. Anyway, the point is, don't snooze. Get up straight away. Every time you hit the snooze button, what happens is you're basically teaching yourself, conditioning yourself to uh, delay things, put things off, keep putting things off, keep putting things off. It's like a Tell yourself, I'll do it later, I'll do it later. It's a, That actually used to be my brother's motto, funnily enough, uh, until the point where I think uh, it just, he, he just took it too far. And uh, yes. So point is, get up straight away. Don't think about it because if you pause to think, first thing in the morning when you wake up, you're going to basically find a reason probably to not get up. You'll start thinking about the problems uh, that you might be facing in the day ahead or you might be projecting into an unknown hypothetical future which may or may not ever come to pass. So the point is when the phone rings, or sorry not the phone because the phone shouldn't be in the bedroom, when your alarm rings, just get up, get up straight away. And that brings me on, on to my next point, no phones in the bedroom. This is a really, 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 really hard one to live by. I know personally from experience how hard it can be. It's uh, it, it's almost like a, a literal monkey on your shoulder, isn't it? Or a metaphorical monkey, I should say. So certainly don't look at your phone i can't implore this enough speaking from personal experience a lot of research as well because what happens is when you look at your phone in the morning you're basically locking yourself in to your regular routine uh basically a typical paradigm which is not necessarily a good thing because you think about it whenever you look at your phone first thing what is you looking at it's probably uh your news feed facebook uh WhatsApp, Snapchat, emails, things you have to do later on in the day, things you maybe forgot about, stresses, things you have to uh, sort somehow, yet you don't know what you're going to do. And then whenever you're looking at the news uh, articles, you're seeing all these different uh, horrendous negative articles. I mean, when was the last time you saw a positive article in the news? Uh, actually, for me, I think it was a Thursday. It was 2014. It's now 2021, so it was a few years ago, give or take. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so... Um, what happens is, though, on a neurochemical level or a neurological level, I should say, is that whenever you wake up, your brain state is in one of theta waves. So basically, we have numerous different types of brain waves. Brain waves they sound like what they are. They're basically waves which permeate the brain. They allow it to function. The main ones are starting with highest frequency, beta, alpha, theta, and delta. So basically, when you're awake and alert and in work, uh, you're, you're maybe a bit stressed, you're having to think quite uh, cognitively, you would be said to be in a, or you're said to be in a beta state. So the brain waves are really fast. You know, you're, you're going, you're, 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 you're pedals to the metal. So everything's just going, you're maybe stressed, maybe not. Just below that is alpha state. Now that's where the waves are a bit slower. It's more conducive to learning. In fact, uh, some would describe it as a state of super learning and it's where flow state can arrive from or arise from. So flow state is just where everything just well, literally flows. You're in the zone, basically. Below alpha, we have theta, which is again slower still. Theta can be obtained through uh, meditation. It's like a trance. It's a trance-like state, and it's also present in light sleep. And then just below that is delta waves, and that's where it's like really deep sleep. The brain waves really slow, and uh, it's basically it's like a state of rest, repair, recovery, and the brain is just well recovering from the day before, essentially. Anyway, the one we're focusing on right now is theta waves. So as soon as you wake up, you go from delta into theta. You're there for a few minutes. It can vary from person to person. But whenever you're in theta state, the brain is basically like Play-Doh. Neuroplasticity is an all-time high. Neuroplasticity is basically the brain's ability to change itself, learn new things, and get you know, imprinted. You can imprint new habits, routines more easily. So basically, basically like Play-Doh. And... Uh, if your brain is like Play-Doh for the first thing in the morning, and also the same thing happens when you're drifting off to sleep at night time, you enter a theta state again. So it's during these two windows, you really don't want to be absorbing negative, non-conducive, destructive content, essentially. So uh, you don't want to be uh, looking at negative news articles or um, 
thinking negative thoughts because that's basically going to set the tone for the rest of the day. So if you start the, the day on a negative tone, then you finish the day on a negative tone, you can see how it can permeate into the rest of the day and also your sleep that night. So rather, instead of that, I recommend even using that time to uh, either listen to something constructive, like it can be uh, like a positive podcast, it can be a motivational speech. You can even just tell yourself good thoughts and have some affirmations, which you like to run through. Um, some personal favorites of mine are uh, things like, I am love, I am joy, I am peace, I am enlightenment, I am worthy, I am happy, I am getting better every day, I am improving, I am wealthy, I am healthy. You get the idea. The more you do this, the more it basically seeps into your subconscious as well. So first two points, obviously you want to get up straight away. Don't hit the snooze button. Avoid looking at your phone first thing in the morning and at the very end of the day. So those are our first two points. The third thing, which I really, really, really believe is a fantastic way to turbocharge your morning is to probably not like it, but uh, have a cold shower. Now, uh, nobody obviously wants to, well, maybe some people enjoy it, but the thought of a cold shower doesn't really excite anybody, I'm sure, unless you uh, are a glutton for punishment or are particularly sadistic, maybe if you are, that's okay, that's okay. Anyway, so you could talk about cold showers and the physiology and physiological benefits which you will get from them for a long time, but I wanted to distill it down just into the main, the main key components. So if you have a cold shower, first of all, you don't need to jump into a cold shower because that'd be madness. And uh, it doesn't need to be long. So you have your warm shower at the start, as normal. And then for the last 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, there seems to be a point of diminishing returns beyond 90 seconds from what I understand from the research. But 30 seconds to 90 seconds, it really does seem to be the sweet spot. So if you can turn the hot shower down to cold, you do it gradually, you do it in one go. What happens is you uh, essentially, you, you shock your system into waking up to really waking up. You actually trigger your sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is one branch of the autonomic nervous system. So you've got your sympathetic, you've got your parasympathetic, and uh, the sympathetic is basically the one responsible for the fight or flight response. The parasympathetic is rest and digest. So what happens is whenever you uh, trigger the sympathetic nervous system you're basically telling yourself whoa i have to wake up i have to i have to protect myself from that that uh, uh saber to tiger over there is what you would say if it was like several thousand years ago anyway so you're basically shocking yourself alert you're also causing uh your adrenal glands and your kidneys to uh secrete adrenaline so adrenaline will obviously increase your heart rate it'll fire you up uh, it can also help remove toxins as well from the blood and it's only it's only a short burst. And whenever you come out of that shower, you will feel completely and utterly energized. You'll feel like you just, uh, I don't know, took a bolt of lightning to the chest. And what, what it also does as well, on another physiological level, it causes all the vessels, all the little vessels, along every vessel in the body, and also along the lymph vessels as well. The lymphatic system is basically, it's a waste removal system. And all of these little vessels, Veins, arteries, capillaries, lymph vessels, they're surrounded by little smooth muscles. Smooth muscles are ones which we don't have control over. So they're, uh, they're all autonomic, automatic, basically. And whenever the vessels are exposed to cold, whenever the body is exposed to cold, these muscles contract the vessels. And that's actually what causes the pain whenever you put your hand in cold water. Whenever the vessels constrict, because you're trying to conserve heat, that's where the pain sensation comes from. But one of the great benefits of this, especially whenever the, well, for all the vessels in the body, whenever they constrict, it's basically like a vascular or cardiovascular workout for the vessels themselves. So these be muscles, which are probably not really worth that much whenever you think about it, because if you think about it, how often are you actually ever exposed to cold? As a society, we're generally, we, we, we crave comfort. So it's, uh, it's always more or less the same temperature that we're exposed to, not too hot, not too cold and the body doesn't have to work. Look at it this way. If an astronaut goes to space and he's there for two, three, four weeks, his muscles atrophy, they waste away because they're not subjected to the force of gravity. There's no resistance, basically. So uh, he gets weak. Also, the bones can weaken as well. Bone density decreases, and uh, it's very, very similar to our immune systems and our vessels as well. Whenever we're not subjected to any form of stress, we become the body becomes weak physiologically. It becomes complacent. So. Whenever you're exposed to the cold, 
these little muscles around the vessels, they contract, compresses the blood vessels, and it keeps the blood, the vascular network, basically exercised. It keeps it, it keeps it running optimally. But also with the lymph vessels, it actually helps push the lymph, like tooth, like toothpaste, you know, out of tooth, uh, toothpaste out of a toothpaste tube. <laughs> it basically forces or squeezes the lymph throughout these vessels, and the more that that lymph is hurried along the lymphatic system, the more waste is actually removed from the body. So it actually helps clean up your interior or your, your insides as well. Furthermore, actually another benefit of the cold is it's been proven as well to increase the number of white blood cells released from the bone marrow. So uh, the literature is all there. The science has been done. You can look it up for yourself, but uh, I believe it's T lymphocytes, T cells, T cells and B cells, lymphocytes, monocytes, I'm not sure exactly the specific white blood cells, but total white blood cell count does increase over time with uh, increased cold exposure. So you only need to do it for 30, 60, 90 seconds a day. And uh, any more than that, well, if you enjoy pain, by all means. So basically, get up first thing in the morning. Don't hit the snooze button. No phone in the room at the start of the day or end of the day. Thirdly, get a cold shower. Thank me later. Well, hopefully you'll thank me. <laughs> and then what I find as well, another fantastic thing which really has revolutionized my mornings, which I've been doing, I've been basically been doing every one of these steps for the last, uh, just over the last year. And it totally has made every day substantially better than what they were beforehand because I'm really giving myself the best chance to start the day right and get me in the right mindset. Anyway, the fourth and final thing which I would really recommend incorporating into your day, the start of the day, is uh, a breathing routine. It can, well, it can be meditation, it can be breathing, it can be both, because I mean, let's face it, we have to <laughs> always breathe. But the one I'm referring to in particular is one by Wim Hof, also known as the Iceman. Maybe you've come across him. He's uh, been all over the news for the last uh, last few years. In fact, he's been going for a long time, but it's only really in the last, I think the last five, six, seven years or so that he's really come to prominence. But uh, the man is superhuman. He's a, he's the most, uh, probably the most inspirational, one of the best human beings that I've ever had the pleasure of actually listening to you or watching or never met the man personally, but it would definitely be what well, it is on my, my life bucket list. Anyway, so his breathing routine in a nutshell is forced hyperventilation, which can sound a bit daunting, no doubt about it, but it works. It works. And what it does is, I'll talk you through the process first of all. So very, very briefly, there are three rounds. Each round is comprised of Breathing, breath hold or retention phase, and then a recovery breath. So the breath or the breathing portion, you do 30 to 40 forced breaths, essentially. So you're going to inhale fully and then exhale partially. You can do it through the mouth, through the nose. Doesn't really matter each way. There are different, there, there are benefits to different ways. For instance, apparently breathing through the nose with the increased rate of airflow, it actually liberates more nitric oxide from the epithelium within the nose, which can actually, well, what it does is it dilates vessels, bronchi, bronchioles. It basically, it's, it's a vasodilator. So it helps breathing. Anyway, so you get through your nose, through your mouth. You pick your way. Anyway, so you go fully in like this here, for instance. Just let it go. Essentially like that. I can't really see it here, but I'm actually diaphragmatic breathing. So diaphragmatic breathing is essentially, let's see if I can show you. So my diaphragm is going out when I'm breathing in. And then I'm letting my ribcage move up and out. So and again, diaphragmatic breathing is very, it's a very, uh, it's a very cool tool actually to basically upgrade your breathing. You just get more air in you can fill your lungs vital capacity more so it just elevates your breathing potential don't get bogged down that now basically you just want to breathe in fully and let it go do that 30 to 40 times and then hold your breath so normally you can hold your breath 30 to 40 seconds without breathing actually sorry no on a regular breath hold it'd be about 30 to 40 seconds but once you do this you can hold your breath for 90 seconds, two minutes, two and a half minutes after the first round, you'll be amazed because what happens is whenever you're doing the forced ventilation, forced hyperventilation in the previous stage, you're actually expelling all the carbon dioxide from the blood. 
So what happens is, whenever you finally have to take a breath, it's not, you don't have to take a breath due to lack of oxygen, you have to take a breath due to build up of the CO2. So whenever you're doing your breath, you've done your 30 to 40 breaths, and after the final breath, you just, you let it go, and then you just start your breath retention. And you don't need to breathe at all, until 90 seconds, two minutes, two and a half minutes, and that's due to the build up of CO2. And then after that, once the CO2 builds up to a high enough level, you'll eventually have to take a breath and you take your recovery breath. And then you hold it for 15 seconds. And while you're holding for 15 seconds, well, if you squeeze your abs, squeeze your core, you actually, some people describe it as a, basically oxygenating your head, sending the oxygen up to your head. That's not really true. Physiologically speaking, what it actually does is it drives cerebrospinal fluid or CSF your spinal column into your head and it can actually ac um, activate the pineal gland. Pineal gland is a whole different kettle of fish now. So uh, <laughs> you see what I was saying before, uh, we're all aspects of self-improvement, body, physiology, mind, spirit, etc. It's all interlinked and it's very easy to find different rabbit holes, but we'll not get bogged down by that now. The point is with the breath hold, you don't have to squeeze your abs, you can if you want, but uh, it's really just a recovery breath to help get the oxygen back in and restore everything back to normal. So, benefits of that breathing technique. For one thing, what you're doing is, you're actually triggering your sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system alternatively. It's like a brake pedal. So, you're essentially working both of them. But what this allows you to do is, it actually, and also again, this is very similar to the cold charge as well in this respect. It allows you to condition yourself to stress you're will, willfully exposing yourself to stress. It's like, like I've said before with the astronauts, whenever they're in space, there's no stress, basically no gravity, so their muscles weaken. We're not exposed to physiological stress on a daily basis, therefore our bodies become weaker. If you don't go to the gym, your muscles are weak. If you go to the gym, you expose yourself to resistive stress, resistant stress, you get stronger. So it's the same thing here. You're basically conditioning your, your body and your immune system to, to handle stress, and this will carry over into the day the day ahead because if you can if you can get into a cold shower you can handle that and if you can handle this breathing and your parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems are able to work efficiently on a mental and a physical level you're going to be much more resilient to stress throughout the day and things won't bother you the same way it's generally mind-blowing benefits that uh, you can get from it you're also with with the breathing as well you're also again getting more of an adrenaline release as well which again it uh for use of a better term it gets the hand on out of the jet as we say in northern ireland it gets the heart rate up, it gets it working, and again, it can neutralize uh, basically invaders, invading microbes in the blood through the adrenaline, and it can also, it's got a few other benefits as well. Nasal decongestion is one of them, and that could be due to the adrenaline, adrenaline release. It could be due to the fact that, because uh, nobody's really talked that much about it, it could be due to the elevated nitric oxide being released through the nose. It could also be due to anti-inflammatory properties. This breathing technique was really, really cool is it actually re it, it, it releases anti-inflammatory proteins into the blood which neutralize inflammation so Wim Hof actually what he did was in, there was an experiment uh, in Radbound Hospital I think it was around 2015 2016 and what happened was Hof along with a couple dozen other volunteers they were voluntarily injected with Escherichia coli which is uh, an endotoxin so whenever you get infected with this endotoxin you uh, develop flu-like flu -like symptoms, basically cold, fever, aches, pains. It's very, very unpleasant. So what they did was they had a couple of dozen guys, they were all guys as well, a couple of dozen guys who were trained in the Wim Hof method, then there was a dozen guys in the control group. So they just they, they were just exposed to the, the endotoxin and uh, they had no technique to deal with it. So that was the baseline. Every one of the men in the, the Hof group, the breathing group, they were successfully able to dampen the immune response. They were able to basically squash, prevent any inflammation from arising. Therefore, no symptoms arose. So uh, the breathing itself is very much an anti-inflammatory technique. So it's anti-inflammatory. It wakes you up. It uh, it promotes you to, it helps you actually breathe more deeply throughout the day because you're more conscious of your breathing. And I think another cool benefit is, which hasn't been talked about before, Whenever you breathe deeply, especially in this method, you're stretching the muscles, your intercostal muscles around your ribcage. So uh, whenever you stretch them, your lungs can actually expand more, taking more air because your ribs can move up and out more freely. 
So you're actually getting a bit more oxygen into the lungs as well. Anyway, hopefully I haven't bored you to tears after all that. But uh, yeah, so those four things, you can do those four things in the day. Uh, in the morning, first thing. So get out of bed straight away. Don't look at the phone because, you know, brain plasticity, neuroplasticity, you're in theta, theta waves. You're much more susceptible to positive and negative influence. Replace the negativity on the phone. There's something positive, like maybe like a motivational speech or some positive affirmations, things like that. There, you'll find your own thing. Uh, cold exposure in the shower. Have a warm shower at the start. Cool it off towards the end, and then have uh, have a have a Kit Kat. Well, actually, no, I was going to say treat yourself. Have a Kit Kat. <laughs> Just go and do the breathing routine straight away. Some people do the breathing routine before the cold shower because another benefit of the breathing routine it actually deactivates pain receptors or nociceptors in the body, which uh, are your pain receptors. So if you do the breathing before the cold. You'll be more resilient to the cold. I like to have my shower first thing, then do the breathing after. There's really no right or wrong way, but if you do all those things and more, I genuinely believe that you will transform the quality of your mornings and then subsequently the day ahead because you're going to be just in such a good zone. It'll make all the difference. I can't emphasize that enough. Anyway, until next time, my friends, thank you very much and all the best. Take care.